puppet in the first half and a different puppet in the second half. It just okay. depends what we decide on for that year. Okay, neat. Uh, Bob Rumba commented, do you have to get on the buses after the show and kid around and say goodbye on every bus? Jim Barber and I had to do that in Branson. No, we don't do that. A lot of them, they want to get out of there because we are a stop off. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. A lot of times, well, now that we have the hotel, they're staying overnight. And we'll we, if we know that, we will, you know, go out and make them feel real welcome or whatever. But most of the times they're, you know, the bus is already rolling. <laughs> By the time the last person has left the auditorium, the buses are gone. And we haven't, we don't have a chance to get out there. And we greet everybody in the lobby after the shows. Mm -hmm. We're there for pictures and talking and, you know, all that stuff after the show in the lobby. So. What's that like after having to put on your, your stage face and then going back out there to do, hi, how are you? <laughs> um, you just used to it? Or? We, we get some, some really weird comments sometimes, and, and you just kind of <laughs> don't know what that's about. Okay, have a nice day. Smile right. and nod. You, know, you do a lot of, okay, yeah. good to see you. Bye now. You know, just some people are weird. <laughs> Yeah. Have you ever gotten any puppet ideas from seeing the people leave the theater? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, like, like that'd be a great puppet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We okay. we have a guy that comes in every year mm -hmm. and he, he's dressed as a woman. Okay. And whatever. Right. But it's the way he does it. His <laughs> wig is on crooked. He can't walk in high heels to save his life. His yeah. legs are not shaved. Uh, he's got like a goatee. Yeah. And, and, and when you first couple times you see him, you go, okay, this is a joke. He lost a bet and he had to dress <laughs> as a woman and come to right. this show. And because yeah. it, looks, it looks so comical. Right. You're thinking, nobody's going to look in the mirror and go, hey, I look good. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and so the first couple times yeah. he came in, everybody came over to me and went, got to make a puppet. It looks like that. And, <laughs> and, <they're pointing laughs> and I thought it was a joke. I thought somebody put him up to it, you know, because he's a he's a big burly like, guy. <laughs> Can you imagine how funny you get the puppet out and the, the audience sees the back of the puppet and then you turn it and you see the goatee and you set him on the stand? That was That's exactly hilarious. one of the ideas that we had. Oh, man. Take him out and see the back of him and the long hair and the dress and it's like, oh, it's a girl <laughs> puppet. Turn and go, yeah! <laughs> With the goatee and the hairy yeah. legs. Oh, my goodness. And the wig going crooked and it's got the, the part down in the middle, you know. Right, and, right. And it's on <laughs> <laughs> and he I don't know if he was driving in the car at 80 miles an hour and tried to put his lipstick on I, I it's what it looks like I mean it just he's got lipstick smeared like the Joker you know he's got yeah. lipstick smeared all over his face and we're, oh. well now you've got and a so, great filler act for that month that you guys <laughs> want to start that <laughs> yeah oh my goodness and, oh, and he's been there probably five or six times in the last eight years. Mm -hmm. And it's the same outfit every time. He doesn't change. Yeah. And it's like, we know he's not a woman because right. no woman would wear the same outfit six or seven or eight <laughs> times in a row to the same place. That's not going to happen, you know. So, That's hilarious. Oh, man. Oh, boy, we've had some funny stuff. Funny yeah. stuff. Have you ever had anything happen where you've interacted with someone and it sparked an idea for material that you've later put into the show? Or to one of your bits with your characters? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Really? Okay. Um, we, we had a lady come up to us one time, and she was a waitress at uh, Waffle House. Oh, and God. I had made a comment about Waffle House. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I have a joke that I do where I, I accuse the one puppet of trying to get us killed on the way to the theater today because we stopped at Waffle House to get him his waffle and right. you tried to get us killed and we tell this joke and we don't say much about Waffle House. It was just right. a joke we told in Waffle House. Well, this lady came mm -hmm. up to us and she was saying that uh, 
she's a waitress at Waffle House and you really need to do a bit about Waffle House. And she says, you know what it takes to work at Waffle House? I said, no, what? She goes, a felony. <laughs> <laughs> and she just come up That's with all right. this stuff. Oh, and, and so then I started doing stuff about Waffle House. And in fact, I've got a routine that I'm working on now for this year's show, mm -hmm. if they open. And uh, <laughs> and about Waffle House. And the one character that I have is the cook at Waffle House. And oh, so really? We, yeah. We've been working yeah. on that. What character is that? Uh, his name is Lance. Mm -hmm. And he, I picked him up at the convention seven, eight years ago, oh, about six years ago. About six years ago, I picked him up at the convention. I used him... In in the theater, we have a big barn. The front of the well, actually, the stage is the front of a barn, and the windows will open up on the front of the barn. And he okay. was a character in the window the one year, oh, and I haven't used him since down there. He was mm -hmm. a little bit uh, too much for our audience. I, I've seen uh, what he looks like, but can you tell our audience? Kind of give them. Oh, a, I got him right here. You want to see? Oh, him? yeah, that'd be great. Because yeah. <laughs> this will this will catch you off guard. He was built by Jet, is that right? From the dummy shop? Yeah. 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 So, here, let me. <laughs> Hi there. Oh, it's so good to see you guys here. You might need to scoot back and center the. There you go. Scoot back a little bit well, so we can see his full body. Technology, huh? Yeah. That's Just the one. <laughs> Oh, man, oh, oh, good to see. Is that the amazing Harvey? Landon Harvey? Is it? Oh, good to see you. Oh, my. I work at the Waffle House. Yes, I do. I'm the cook. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> so this is Lance, and hey, he's all no, tattooed no. up. And yeah. he's all pierced up, and his hair is um, a little he's different a yeah. <laughs> compared yeah. to Amish country people. And uh, do so they, do, we they have get, this... do they get the comedy that you do with him? Because he seems like the like the exact opposite of what you know you would see yeah. someone use for Amish people. What is what was that like bringing him in to the to the picture? And were you were you worried that maybe this might not click with them, or maybe because it's so well, such you... a contrast at will? He was just a, a throw in from the window. Okay. He would make a couple comments. Um, mm -hmm. The window would fly open. And he'd go, hey, 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 it's Lance. By the way, somebody left their window, their uh, lights on yeah, on their buggy. <laughs> and then the window would shut. And everybody would sit there and they'd go, lights on on a buggy? What? Uh, <laughs> and then the windows would fly back open. And he would say, uh, there is a car with the lights on. And the license number is HQY 47311619242 hike, uh, you know, <laughs> and the windows right. are closed. And then people were sitting there going, is somebody with their lights on, really? And, you know, and he, come on, I'm just kidding. Get a sense of humor, you know. Right. And that's, it was just a throwaway thing like that. Sure. And it worked very well. But then I just haven't uh, brought him back out. Yeah. And, uh, so this year, I think I'm going to bring him out as the cook at the Waffle House, and he's going to talk about the exciting career he has at Waffle House. So. Oh, that's great. That's really interesting. So you had picked him up at the convention at uh, in the dealer's room? Yeah. What yeah. was it about the character that drew you to him? He was so different. He okay. was just all tattooed up, all pierced up. Uh, he has a, uh, his shirt is a, like a Jersey shirt mm -hmm. with a number 25 on it, but then it's cut off, you know, and his belly hangs out and, <laughs> and it's just funny looking. It's just a funny looking character. Yeah. And uh, he, he's got his fingernails painted and he's got a bunch of rings on and stuff like that. And I thought, you know, this is, this is 180 degrees from Amish country. I right. mean, this is just, you know, and, and the people yeah. that come there to, to, we call it gawk at the Amish. That's what they do. They sit and stare at the Amish. They can't believe yeah. somebody lives without electricity. They can't believe somebody lives without a car and mm -hmm. they don't even have computers. Oh, what do we do? You know, it's like no right. big deal. <laughs>
Yeah. So it's wow. it's a lot of fun. So when you purchase a character that you don't already have, that you weren't already, I, I assume you weren't looking for, were you looking for a character or did you just purchase it? Okay. So when, can you talk a little bit about that? Because I feel like the, the general public, people will see something that's pretty and they'll go, oh, I need to have that puppet. Um, you know, I know uh, Tom Crowell said that he's done that. I think we all have. But, um, and then I saw with a horse puppet, like from last year that he got, that he picked up from Jet. That's a great character. So, but it's interesting. Can you talk about, did, were you able to think of jokes immediately when you saw it? You're like, oh, well, this is the exact opposite of what I would use, which is why I have to have it because it's unexpected and I could do this, this, and this with it. Or was it just you have to, you have to, you're like, I think I could do something with this and I'll, I'll see what happens. What's your, what's your thought? I, I got Lance because he was totally opposite of the theater, the mentality, and everything about the theater. Okay. And I knew I could put him in somewhere, somehow and mm -hmm. make some good comedy out of that. I didn't know exactly what, but the minute I saw him, I went, oh, yeah, this is, you know. And I, I don't just buy puppets. Mm -hmm. I have to have, mine starts here first. Sure. And, and I get that whole character going and that whole story of the character. I just don't grab a puppet and do two jokes and lay him down. Right. My puppet has a whole, all of my puppets have a whole backstory. All of my puppets are based on somebody that I know that is okay. a living character. And so when I pick that puppet up and say that name, I know exactly how that puppet acts, how that puppet talks, how all the mannerisms about that puppet, because I know the real person that is behind mm -hmm. those puppets. Mm -hmm. And so all of my puppets start up here. And then I'll look real hard and search real hard to find a puppet that fits that character. Mm -hmm. Now, like Howard, my old man, a uh, yes. puppet that you had in the ad, mm -hmm. I had four. I had four old men puppets. Mm -hmm. They weren't right. They weren't right. Finally, mm -hmm. I had Robert McRae, who created the big head puppets, uh, Robert McCray, I, I <laughs> called him and told him I wanted an old man puppet. And he goes, that's all I need to know. Thanks. Bye. Really? Wow. Yeah. Did that and make you nervous at all or not? Because you were familiar with his style. I, well, you know, he is a true sculptor, true mm -hmm. artist. Yeah. He's and I told him I wanted an old man character and that's all he wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. And a couple of weeks later, he called me and he says, I got a really cool idea. Do you want it? What's the idea? No, 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 no. The question is, do you want it? Yes or no? Uh, yeah. Why not? Sure. And then he called me a couple weeks later and he said, is it wild or is it conservative? And I uh -huh. said, is what wild? And he said, no. Do you want it wild or do you want it conservative? And I said, well, he's 93. He's conservative. He goes, okay, right. thanks. And hangs up. And a couple weeks later, I get a big box in the mail. And when I open it up, it's that exact character that I've had right here for 15 wow. years. And he's finally sitting there in front of me, looking back at me. And he has just been a hoot ever since. So you you didn't even see a sketch or anything. He no. was just asking you for certain no. adjectives and certain vague questions. Wow. No. No. And he, he actually, he hit it out of the park. I used him probably two years mm -hmm. and I was going to a Disney cruise and we got to the port and I picked up the cases and they had a fork truck and the fork truck ran the blade right through the case oh, and it hit wow. him right below the chin and cut his head off right below the chin. Well, Disney has a wonderful workshop aboard the ships. And so we went down and we glued really? him all back together. And we hooked everything up. And we did it with a two-part epoxy. Oh, and we okay. Set his, oh, that's good. The head stick in the vise and we glued everything together and got everything working. And I was like, yay. And then we went to dinner. And we come back after dinner two hours later. And some of the resin... The two-part epoxy had run down into the head stick and got hard. Oh, no. <laughs> so oh, I had a puppet 
that didn't work. And we were on stage that night. And so we got through it. We did it with George and some of our audience participation stuff and like that. Right. No problem. But now I had a puppet that didn't work. And Robert had rebuilt him before because I just used him so much he'd come apart. Uh -huh. And Robert told me to get that remade uh, by someone else. And so, of course, I took he was it like, I'm done. <laughs> Yeah, I, I yeah, I took it to Brant Gilmer because I know uh, once Brant builds it, it's good for life, you know. Right. And so I took it up to Brant and I had a little bit of the bottom of the nose shaved off so you could see the mouth a little better. And I had the eyes opened up a little more so you could see the eyes a little better. Other than that, it's all the same. And Brant made it for me and uh, he's been he's been wonderful ever since. And I, I have another puppet by Brant that I have used since probably about 93 and I have used him to death since 93. And I've had one, one problem with him in all those years. And so that's why I took this one to Brant and had Brant build this one because I knew it would last forever. <laughs> so that's, that's, oh, and that thing he asked me about, do you want it? You know, do you want, do you want this something really cool? I thought his teeth come out, his teeth are held in with a magnet. And so when oh, I bring him cool. out of the box, he says to me, your teeth, yeah, and I'll pull his teeth out and I'll shake the water off of them and I'll stick them in his mouth. And he'll, ah, ah, mm, that's better. You know, and he starts oh, talking. Great. Then. And yeah. it is so funny. And what, what were you playing with before you touched my teeth? Wash your hands once in a while, you know, yeah. and stuff like that. I love and that, though, because all of all of your comedy is character driven. They're jokes, but they're yeah. they're they push the audience's understanding of the character. And that's what's mm -hmm. so great about watching you work and and hearing um, everything you have to have to share about writing comedy. Um, can it, you go it, a little it's bit? It's so much easier. It's so much yeah. easier that way. Yeah. Um, you have a real strong character. Mm -hmm. It is easy to write comedy for him. Put him in any situation. In a, in a strong character in any situation will make comedy. Um, yeah. You know, you see a lot of ventriloquists, they have 41 puppets, and they do three jokes with each one of them. But they're all puppets. There's no characters there. Yeah. They're all puppets that do just three set jokes, blah, 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 and they're done. Throw it away, get another puppet, blah, 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 blah. And they're yeah. done. That's not a character. That's a puppet doing three jokes. Well, now this is a great this is a great uh talking point because someone had told me I wasn't able to make it to the convention last year, but that you had performed and you did twenty, was it like 20, 15 or twenty minutes with a tennis ball? Yeah. Can you talk yeah. about that? Because that that I mean, if it, that's you know, shocking, Jay. <laughs> to get that much time out of a, a tennis ball and creating a backstory for a ball. I mean, well, you're it, like, it was, did you see the tennis ball? And you said, Oh, well challenge accepted. And you just, you're like, yeah, I'm going to well, do this. I, I, I was going to use him in the show and I knew okay. I was going to use him in the show. Um, so I went out and I, the audience was a little down and I went out and did my okay. All right thing, which automatically brings any audience back up. And I brought the audience back up with that. And then I brought out Wilson. And Wilson is my tennis ball. And I've been using Wilson. I used Wilson clear back in like 91, 92 in school shows. Okay. And, and then I put him away. And, <laughs> and it was one of those things about 15 years later, a friend of mine, who was a principal at one of the schools that I did way back then, said to me, hey, you're going up to Abbott's Magic Get-Together in Colon, Michigan. I said, yeah. And she goes, we're going to be there. Use Wilson. And I said, Wilson? She goes, the tennis ball. I said, oh, I haven't used Wilson the tennis ball in years. She goes, you've got to do Wilson. That is great. So I went up to the Magic uh, Get Together there in Colon, Michigan, used Wilson, huge hit. And I've been using him ever since. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's his life, the life of a tennis ball. 
What okay. kind of things, you know, yeah, yeah, you played a little tennis and then he got hit up on the roof in one of the tennis matches and there he laid in the hot sun and he laid on the roof. He knew his life was over <laughs> and the audience will always go, oh, and then it started to rain and it rained and it rained and the water come by and washed me down the gutter, down the gutter. I went out into the yard and I went, yay, that's great. You're off. No. And I, I tell a story at the beginning right. where I, I started out. I ran over a tennis ball with a lawnmower and that was my first puppet. And that's true. Oh, really? And then I, then I do the okay, all right thing. And then I, I started with Wilson and, you know, then I just go wash down the gutter and out into the yard. I went, I said, yeah, that's great. You're off the roof. He goes, no. Cause then some idiot ran over me with a lawnmower and huge laugh. And then he says, and then a dog came along and a dog picked him up and started chewing on him, slobbering on him. Well, he had some bad breath. Ugh. And so you were the first chew toy. Yeah, so uh, uh, what a life. And that, that dog even traumatized. And, and as soon as I say that, the audience will go, ooh. <laughs> and you'll look at him and go, thank you. <laughs> and it just keeps building. And all of the sure. things you do with the tennis ball, he has experienced. And we talk about them and keep going. In fact, he's here. Here he is. Yes, it is. And you're using it? How is this? This cannot be. You are a technology idiot. I know that's true. Hi, Wilson. Oh, thank you for being a part of this interview. Well, thank you. Landon. The world famous Landon's here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. This is so cool. Oh, <laughs> Oh man, oh man. You're you got a lot of you got a lot of energy. Well, we're not at the theater, so I gotta do something here. <laughs> oh my. So this is Mr. Wilson and all that yeah. he went through. And then I'll I'll pick him up and throw him like this. And this year at the theater, we're gonna have uh uh Niels come out juggling. And and then I'll walk out in a juggling and say, Hey, throw me one of those, and he'll throw me Mr. Wilson. Oh and that's then, great. Yeah, and he'll go, oh, thank God you're here. I was ready to puke. <laughs> you know? But that's great because that's another, that's such a clever way of, of having a puppet enter. Yeah. That and that's one thing I've always, I've always said in our business, we need to come up with different ways to present the puppet, to bring it out and sure. get rid of it. Instead of just, I have a friend here in the box <laughs> and right. pull him out. And when you're done, put him back. Oh, I don't want to go in the box. Don't put me in the box. You know, oh, I hate that. And and we got to have different ways. Many, many years ago, I worked with uh, Norm Nielsen. Mm -hmm. uh, he just passed. A uh, great magician. And he had a little Corvette that would come out and bring out his violin. And he would do a, his magic trick with the violin. Mm -hmm. And we were doing a show together. And he said to me, hey, how about if we bring the puppet out on the violin? And I come out yelling that he stole the, the, the Corvette. You know, it was a little Corvette thing, Barbie right. Corvette, uh, painted different color. It wasn't pink. And, <laughs> and so he does his bit, you know, and all this. And then a little bit later, they introduce me and I come out a ventriloquist. But I don't. And then there's a bunch of commotion backstage. And out comes this Corvette and CW's driving it and sitting in it and driving it and they bring and I pick what are you doing I stole it from Norm this is so cool and Norm you idiot you stole my Corvette you know and, and then it takes off and they take it backstage it was a great way to bring the puppet out yeah and we need to have different ways that we present the puppet and bring the puppet out sure and have a reason why he's there just not jamming back in a box or pull another one out of a box mm-hmm well, it's interesting because it also keeps the audience on their toes, too. Oh, yeah. you know, if, if they're expecting one thing and, you know, you you do throw your voice or, or whatever, and it also you can also shift their focus, too, and use more of the stage up that way. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, let's see what we have here. 
Oh, <laughs> in the comments, uh, <laughs> we had uh, Dale Brown. He said, don't base a character on Al Gettler, career killer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love Al and Dave. The way they always go at each other. <laughs> and then, hilarious. I'll tell you, they, we need we need Al and Dale puppets in the convention and let them go at each other. I think I think that'd be great. Yeah, that that would be something. Oh man. Yeah. So for performing for the um, for Amish, what was that like going into that? Was it did you you're like oh I got to change all my material? Were you like oh I only no have to no 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 we we don't perform for the Amish. Okay. Uh, we perform for the tourists that come and see the Amish. Okay. We have anywhere from three to five million tourists a year that come into Amish country to gawk at the Amish and to watch the Amish way of life and to buy the quilts and the baskets and the food and stuff like that. Okay, um, yeah. It's a, it's a multi, multi-billion dollar industry. Uh, the food, the baskets, the clothing, uh, the, the handmade stuff that they make. And uh, so it's, it's, it's all aimed toward the tourists coming in to look at the Amish. And we make fun of them for that. In fact, the one puppet, uh, he comes out. <clears throat> and you were late for the show. Go, yeah, I know. I, I had to finish up at the store. Whew, busy, busy. Tourist season, busy, busy. And I'm glad they've hired some more Amish young people to work in the store. Oh, well, that's good. Well, what did they hire them to do? Oh, take the stickers off. Take the stickers off? Yeah, all the merchandise. What stickers? Stickers to say made in China. And, and all the people are tourists are like, whoa, you know, because they all, and then the pup would even say to him, you really thought they made all this crap? Are you kidding <laughs> me? You know, and so That's it's always hilarious. a good dig on the tourists there, you know. Yeah. And then, so, yeah, it's, it's uh, all tourists coming in to look at the, the Amish to get their stuff that they sell. And mm. it's a great place just to kick back and relax. Our, uh, we have a bunch of bed and breakfast there, a bunch of cabins. Uh, we actually have some tree houses and stuff like that. And those stay rented out year round. People just want to come and, you know, kick back and, sure. and just disconnect. And so they all come to Amish country to do that. So it works wow. out. Can you talk a little bit? <laughs> Heather Meadows said, that's funny. Yeah, and it is, yes. Um, could you talk a little bit about your comedy writing style? I know that you don't add a lot of... Of characters to your show right now because you have them them perfected but when you when you were adding characters and finding the right characters how did you write material for them and um if you i assume you, you still write stuff here and there uh what is your process for that if it makes me laugh mm -hmm. i write it down okay uh if if something happens that makes me laugh out loud i write it down and then I try to turn that into some sort of a routine, um, some sort of story um, deal uh, that the puppet tells me happened to him uh, or mm -hmm. that I'm trying to explain it to the puppet. And the puppet is saying, well, this is going to go wrong. You know, this is going to end up bad, you know, and then he'll give me some examples of how he thinks it'll go bad, which is exactly what happened. And he'll look at me and go, you didn't see this coming? I'm a dummy and I saw this coming. What, you an idiot or what? You know, right. and, and so if it makes me laugh, then I always write it down and I try to take that instance and turn it into a story or something that we can do back and forth with the puppet. Uh, another thing that really changed the way I write is Steve Roy's um, writing program that he has. Uh, okay. Steve Roy come up with a great way to write and you identify each line. You write it like song lyrics. It looks <laughs> just like song lyrics when you write it and you know what each line is and you know what it's for. You know, every word in that line has been edited down to the least amount of words possible to still paint the picture. Sure. And once you learn how to write, like you talk mm -hmm. and you do it in the Steve Roy fashion in his system, it changes the way you write comedy and you can end up 
between 85 and 90 percent sure that what you just wrote will work on stage. Hmm. And that's real high. That's real wow. high. Yeah. And I just love Steve Roy's um, uh, system. On, and then he also has a deal where you can you can get his his par. They call it a par system, P-A-R. And that par system, you will take a recording of your show. And you'll put in there how long you talked and how long the laugh was, how long you talked, how long the laugh was, how many laughs per minute, how long you talked, mm -hmm. and then how long your laughter was. And then that'll show you where your weak points are in your, in your uh, routines. Hmm. And that right there was worth this week in gold. Yeah. yeah. I, Jeff Dunham had said something at, at one of the conventions about how you have to have something about having a laugh every blank second. So I, I totally, totally get that. Can you talk a little and, bit about writing comedy as it, as a story? That's the easiest way to write it. Okay. Because you can take, well, just take one of the fairy tales. Okay. Mm -hmm. Three little pigs. Right. You got the story. You know, the story. OK, you don't have to memorize that. You know the story. That's why I like to take events that make me laugh. Mm -hmm. I was there. I laughed at it. I saw it. I experienced it. I know that story. Now, what I do is sit down and write out what happened. And then I start embellishing on what happened. I start adding to what happened. And whenever you stretch it, add to it, embellish on it, get it to the ridiculous. And then the puppet has a total reversal of where you're going. People laugh. And so whenever you're telling a story, it's much easier. Now, here's the thing I found. You know, Jeff likes to do the setup and punch, setup and punch, setup right. and punch. And that's great. Mm -hmm. And you, you, need, you need so many laughs per minute. But what I do with this Steve Roy's par system, I will talk for this long and I will get that much laughter. Hmm. Okay. And, and that equals out to so many laughs per minute or so many laughs per minute or the sure. length of laughter per minute. Mm -hmm. Because when you do a, when you do a setup uh, in punch, people go, <laughs> okay. Right. And then it's, yeah, you have a string of them. Sure. Yeah. And then when you do a story and you do the story and they start laughing and you keep building on it and they keep laughing and the mm -hmm. story keeps growing and they keep laughing pretty soon. They're sitting there and they've been laughing for 30 seconds. Yeah. And that 30 second laugh is equal to 30 setup and punches. And wow. I didn't have to memorize all of those setup and punches. Right. And I didn't have to try to make them fit into my character. Mm -hmm. It was we we had a we went and did an outdoor event in Cary, Ohio. Cary, Ohio is just a beautiful rustic one horse town. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of town, they have a nice gazebo and a nice little park. And it's a sweet, wonderful place. And we were up there in the gazebo doing our show. And we had about a hundred people in mm -hmm. front of us there. Behind us in the parking lot across the street was a Civil War reenactment group. <laughs> now, it's 100 degrees outside. It's 97% humidity. And these guys across the street behind us are in wool Civil War uniforms. Yeah. And they're marching around. And they're saluting. And they're carrying their guns. And they're doing all this stuff. Did, did I mention it was 98 degrees with 97% <laughs> humidity? Now, when it's that hot oh, and that humid and you're wearing wool, what are you going to do? And the puppet looks at me and goes, get naked. <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, they drink beer. Oh, yes, cold beer and lots of it. I said, yeah. So these guys are marching around drinking a beer, marching around saluting, drinking a beer, marching around throwing their guns around, drinking a beer. They pulled the big cannon up, and the puppet goes, that cannon was so cool. The barrel, the hole in the barrel of that cannon, I could stick my head in, and, and it echoed when you talked. It was so cool. 
and they drink, you know, a beer and they load the cannon and they push the cannon over here and they set the cannon up and they drink a beer and they load the cannon again and they get it all ready. Did you notice I mentioned they loaded the cannon twice? Yeah. <laughs> And the puppet's oh. going, yeah, give a bunch of drunk hillbillies a cannon and beer. What could go wrong? Oh, <laughs> and man. They fired that cannon, and every car window within a block shattered. And it about blew us off the stage. And people for a mile around all grabbed their ears. And all it about put everybody deaf. And it scream and squeal. And the puppet goes, and all the beer ran down their leg. <laughs> and, oh, and it was a, a hysterical moment. We were just dying on stage oh, laughing at the whole thing. And so the puppet tells the story. And yeah. we just took that story that really happened. And we just exaggerate it on it and embellish it. And I do it with George, who's mm -hmm. a redneck boxer. Mm -hmm. And he's going, what? You give a bunch of hillbillies beer and weapons? Yeah. Well, you're going to make a good YouTube video right there. Give them a big cannon and a bunch oh, of what, beer. This is going to be good. I love, what I love about, about you telling the story as a form of comedy is that it allows you to stay in the moment because you're reminding yourself of that story. And so you're able mm -hmm. to stay in the moment. And the puppet's... Puppet's kind of walking you through it and adding to it, and and it's it's neat because it's versus you playing the straight man and the puppet having the punchline or however else other people do it. You yeah. you and the puppet are in this in this kind of story together, and it paints right. this picture and it adds this. It's it's just a neat a neat thing. So. And and I feel that's people say to us when you're up there, mm -hmm. it's like you and the puppet are best friends. And you went through this together and we forget it's a puppet all together. Yeah. It's two people sitting up there talking and sharing this story. And it's so funny. And that's what ventriloquism is supposed to be. Yeah. That's how it's supposed to work. They're mm -hmm. supposed to forget that puppet is a puppet. And they're supposed to think of him as a real person. And I have George, my redneck boxer, he uh, he comes out and he doesn't want to talk. He's no, I'm not in the mood for this. No, nope. go George. We got a whole group of people that come out to see you. I I'm sorry, but I've had a rough, I've had a rough day. Oh George, George, whoa, buddy, easy, easy, calm. Take a deep breath. <clears throat> What's wrong? I woke up this morning and I was depressed. I was feeling down. Oh. I just can't go on. As a buddy, buddy, I feel for you. So, so when you're all depressed and when you're feeling down and you're upset, what do you do? I go to Walmart. <laughs> what? <laughs> he goes, yeah, I go to Walmart. And he says, what do you buy? Oh, he says, no, I don't go to buy. He goes, I go to watch the people. <laughs> I go, what? He goes, yeah, you're depressed about yourself. You're feeling down about yourself. You're feeling blue. You don't know if you can make it, go to Walmart, <laughs> grab a chair, sit down, watch the people. 15 minutes later, you're going to have self-esteem coming out your wazoo. <laughs> That's why they have the benches at the exits. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. it just, everybody can relate to that. Sure. And you'll go, you'll be sitting there. He goes, in 10 minutes, this sentence will come out of your mouth. I guarantee it. In 10 minutes, sitting at Walmart, you will say, whoa, look at the head on that one. <laughs> and everybody has experienced that. And yeah. everybody starts laughing. And they, you can see people in the audience elbowing each other and pointing at each other like, yeah, that was you at Walmart last week, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and that kind of stuff makes that puppet so real and so alive to that audience um, that it, it, it's great. And it's stuff people can relate to and understand. Mm -hmm. And I just love the story. I love the situational comedy and the story comedy. Yeah, that's, that's truly great. Um, and, and kind of wrapping up here, what do you hope to see from the future of Vent or from future ventriloquists? Well, I hope we get more young people in it. 
Mm -hmm. because in the last couple of years, we've lost so many great ventriloquists. Mm -hmm. A a lot of more unknown, but they were amazing ventriloquists. Um, And I I, I would like to see more young people get involved to take the place of like a Bob Isingson, a Jerry Lane, a Johnny Main, Mm -hmm. um, um, Bob uh, Hamill, Mm -hmm. um, you know, Al Seamock, uh, Pete Michaels, uh, Ken Lucas, you know, there, there's seven of them or eight of them right there I mentioned that need replaced. And, and those guys were all good. Uh, they all made a living at it. And uh, they were a lot of fun. And we need young people to step up and, and take those guys places. You know, I'm at the point in my life now where hmm, I'm not going to be doing much touring anymore. <laughs> I, right. you know, I'm probably stay at the theater and, and that, and somebody's going to have to take my place, you know? Um, mm-hmm. And as I look around uh, the, the regulars at the convention, um, we're going to need a lot of young people coming up here real quick, <laughs> yeah. you know? And uh, so I, I would like to see more young people come in and, and stick with it. You know, mm-hmm. everybody says, what about Darcy? Isn't Darcy great? Isn't Darcy wonderful? Yeah, she is. I hope she mm-hmm. sticks with it. Right. You know, so many people get to that certain age and they're, they're gone. And right. for 10 different reasons, and, and they're all good, uh, you know, mm-hmm. but I would like to see some people come and stick with it, and, you know, uh, and work with it, and go from there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Uh, it's, it's it's interesting. Um, I've always you, you see the kids in the dealer's room where their parents will buy them everything, and and that that's yeah. fine. But you know, it's it's also important. I think uh, just as a, a a PSA, a ventriloquial PSA, that um, if if a kid is is gonna stick with it, you should ha- you should have them have some investment in it. Um, yes. I build puppet. I build soft puppets myself now. I I custom build them for people, but back when I would buy them when I was younger, my parents said, if you want this, you have to save up and pay for it. And that's, that's mm-hmm. been the rule for everything. And it's, it's taught me the value. And I've, after listening to, to your, the uh, IVS podcast and hearing uh, you and uh, Tom Crowell and Mark Wade, all talk about uh, all these different aspects to being a ventriloquist. I've gotten my sound system. I've got my backdrop and it's, it's so much more than puppets, but it's also understanding all the business aspect of it and going in. And everything that you need to be aware of. I I think you really hit it there. Um, They need an investment in it themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was a kid growing up, you know, my dad was a huge man, big man, Mm -hmm. uh, all muscle, you know. And I was over six foot tall in the fifth grade. And I was real tall for my age, but I was Mm -hmm. real skinny and awkward and doppy and and that and he wanted me to play basketball and, and anything else you know sport wise sure. and i wasn't into any of that you know mm-hmm. and when i found the ventriloquism and i was good at it um he didn't want anything to do with that puppet big as you are playing with a puppet what's wrong with you i'm gonna slap your mama <laughs> you know <laughs> right <laughs> and and so anything i did in the puppet world, I paid for anything sure. I learned. I had to get on my bike and ride 10 miles to the library, get mm-hmm. the book and ride 10 miles back, read the book, learn, you know, what I could out of it and ride 10 miles and give it back to him and ride 10 miles back. So mm-hmm. I had a lot invested in it. And my dad mm-hmm. told me um, when I was young, hey, you're not doing that out in public until you can fool me with he goes, you're not taking my name out there in public. And then people go, that Groves boy, a little weird. <laughs> you know, he goes, when you yeah. can fool me. With it, and when I say you're good enough, then you can go out and do it in public. Took me wow. about three years before mm-hmm. the old man finally went, well, I'm <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> and <laughs> then I was allowed to go out and do it. But every kid should have to go through that. Yeah. Because my whole thing was getting my father's approval on it. And I'll never forget, I did the Palace Theater. And the Palace Theater in, here in town is 100 years old or more. Um, and everybody that was anybody 
performed on that stage. It's an old yeah. vaudeville, big vaudeville hop. Oh, so super just, neat. Yes. Yeah. And I'll never forget my first show that I did there, sold out place. And I walked out on that stage and I looked dead center. There sat my grandmother, who was my biggest fan, and she's screaming, Aah! My dad said, they're going to shut up, woman. And my mom was sitting on the other side of my dad going, like that. And she wouldn't say a word. She was going like that. My dad's sitting there like that. And my whole thing that night, nobody else existed in that crowd except that man. Yeah. When I get that man to laugh, I've done mm -hmm. my job. And I knew if I could get that man to laugh, everybody mm -hmm. else in the room was going to pee their pants. Yeah. I got him to laugh. And that's all that mattered to me. And see, wow. when you have that kind of commitment in what you're doing, you're going to stick with it pretty much. you know. Yeah. And, and a lot of kids are just handed everything they want. Mm -hmm. And then if something cooler comes along next month, oh, mom and dad will buy all that stuff for me too. You know, right. that's not good. That's not good at all. all right. So that's my two cents. <laughs> no, but that's great because they look at, you know, you know, while we have so many, I mean, we're at the high, the the prime of puppet builders nowadays, where anything can be built, anything that make, yeah. can be crafted, created. You know, you can add, you know, movements onto saw puppets, which you know is you know crazy. But um, when you have that investment, and and also it's a tool, not a toy. You know, right? And uh, it it just it just that just takes some uh, some some learning on on. Uh, on the parents' part and on, on the kids, but that investment is super important. Dale Brown also yeah. commented, "Investment is, is so important, and it, and it definitely is." Um, and and yeah. and I gotta I gotta say this too. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think, "Well, I need this puppet, or I need that puppet, or I need the fancy of this and the better of that, and the more." I need that you know. five hundred movements. <laughs> right there. I made more money off of this thing last year. I, I was shocked. I was shocked. People fell in love with this stupid little thing. Mm -hmm. It's a tennis ball. <laughs> and you know, I've got some great puppets. I've got some mm -hmm. very expensive puppets. Yeah. They love Mr. Wilson. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was crazy. It's not the puppet. It's the character you create. Yeah. That's what makes all the difference. Another great example is Taylor Mason with his pigs. Yeah. 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 A $4 pig and people go nuts over it. <laughs> yeah. and, and there you sit with a $10,000 puppet and they go, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tammy uh, Hamada it's said. Hunk of wood. Exactly. It's not exactly. the hunk of wood. It's not the cloth. It's the character you create. Yeah. Oh. Tammy Hamada said, "If you're good, you can keep anything. Uh, you can make anything come alive." And Ken is a perfect example. And I totally agree with that statement, Tammy. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank and you so much. Ken, Ken Groves, thank you so much for being part of Landon Live and for sharing your story. Hey, and thank you for doing this, Landon. This is so cool. Oh, I you. wish I, I wish I knew technology but see back when all this started you know mm -hmm. i've been around a while and back when all this started we all thought it was going to be a fad like the cb radio <laughs> like the eight track tape yeah like the cassette tape you know they told us when eight track come out nothing is going to beat the eight track mm -hmm. and then the cassette come out nothing's going to beat the cassette tape and and so that's the era we grew up in Sure. And then when the computers come out, we went, yeah, this is going to be just like the CB radio and the eight track tape. Something is going to come out that's going to be better than this a year from now. So we're not getting involved in this. We've been burnt too many times. <laughs> and I'll never forget the first cell phone I had. It was as big as a football. You know, it took two hands to hold it. Yeah. <laughs> it looked like an old World War II movie. You know, they had the, <laughs> uh, the, the radio in the foxhole, you know. That's yeah, what my yeah. first cell phone looked like. You had to hold it wow. with two hands. And it had the antenna and all that, you know. And we're going, yeah, this is great, you know. And you couldn't hear anything. You might as well <laughs> have had a string with two cans. You know, you'd have done much better. And yeah. And so when this technology thing started taking off, 
a lot of it just went, this is stupid. <laughs> you know, something better is going to come along. And then if you get too far behind it, you can't catch up. You know, right. and the way the technology keeps doubling every year, you know, we're so far behind it now, it's it's unreal. In fact, we used to laugh at Jeff all the time because he was every new gadget that come out, he had and all the computer stuff. He was in love oh, with yeah. the gadgets and the computer stuff. We were going, you're wasting your time. You know, <laughs> goes, you'll see one day. And, and he was right. He wow. was right. But he got on the train and he stayed on the train. Mm. And we never got on the train. And now it's going so fast, we can't get on the train. You know? <laughs> and, and so yeah. it, it's hard it's hard for us to fiddle with all this technology stuff, sure. mainly when you're senile and you're supposed to be at eight 30 and for some reason you think six 30, my dyslexia had a lot to do with that too. So yeah. Whatever. Well, if people want to, <laughs> if people want to work on their puppets and their characters and, and really have an act to be proud of uh, on mayor ventriloquist studios, you have a course called creating a character. Yeah. Can you give uh, us a quick blurb about that? Yes. There's a book and there's also an online course. Yeah. And, and this is a workbook um, mm -hmm. and it, it helps you get over the puppet mm -hmm. and get into the character and build the character. It talks about building a house in this and building your character is like building a house. You don't start with the roof. No, mm -hmm. you start in the basement and you work up. And that's what this book is about. And it really helps people understand creating that character. And then it doesn't matter what puppet you use. Mm -hmm. It's the character that's important, yeah. not the puppet. And once you learn that and you learn how to build a character, create a character, mm -hmm. then you're, you're miles ahead of everybody else. Miles mm -hmm. ahead. And I'll never forget the first time Tom Crowell came over to the house. And I, I, I love Tom. Crowell. I love this story. I've heard it so many times, and it's like my favorite story ever. <laughs> and it was so funny. I've known Tom forever because he was doing the fairs when I was doing the fairs, and he and yeah. his wife were doing the magic. Well, mm -hmm. she went into the corporate world. Their son grew up, and and Tom went, I can't do magic anymore because everybody's doing it for 25 cents. And, you know, I can't do it. I want to do ventriloquism. I said, come over to the house. I will help you. So he comes in and I, he starts unloading puppets. And he has a mountain <laughs> of puppets. I am not kidding you. Eight or 10 big cases with puppets oh, in them. Man. And he's going, this one's really cool. This one's really cool. This one's really cool. This one. I said, well, do a voice. Do something. Uh. <laughs> he couldn't and I go okay you got a lot of puppets but show me a character right. and so we started that day and we started working on a character yeah. and he got rid of most of those puppets and he ended up with the duck dangerous duck wow. and that is his character and he's gotten a few more puppets since then that have, mm -hmm. they were really cool and neat but he didn't have a character and he right. just had a puppet sitting there and he's going, what do I do with this? You know, uh -huh. and you got to get back to creating that character. And that book helps you do that. And Tom and I worked yeah. three or four days on that book and how to create a character, what was important. It's great. I'm having Tom on for an interview tomorrow night. <laughs> I, Tom, I've known Tom for probably 35 years and a great guy. Great yeah. guy. Yeah. You also have a book called Breaking Down the Brick Walls of Showbiz. Yeah. It is a good book for foundational business of this because this is a business. If you want to do it for a living, it's a business and it can mm -hmm. be a great living. Yeah. Um, it's a little outdated because of the technology factor. It was written um, early 90s. I want to say 93, 4, 5, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. um, so the technology thing is not in there, but a lot of the, the foundational things are still good. And it, <laughs> I know a lot of guys that are really great at the show and they yeah. suck at the business. And mm -hmm. then I know a lot of guys that are really good at the business, suck at the show. <laughs> yeah. And you've got to have both. You really have to have both to make it work. And so, you know, it's, it's one of those things. There's a lot of good foundational things in that book, breaking down the brick walls. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it lets you know it's not 
your amazing little show with your amazing little puppets. Right. It's a lot about the business and the connections and the networking you do and the relationships you build. Yeah. And all it's, of that is very important. Yeah. It's, a, it's everything that leads up to that moment you go on stage. Yeah. yeah. And then, then you better have the goods when you hit that stage. Yeah. Or you're done. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, it, and that's how it works. And, mm -hmm. you know, you don't get a participation trophy in this. You either win or you lose, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's so important. And I know a lot of guys that have a great show, but they can't do the office work. They're not disciplined enough to do the office work to mm -hmm. create the show. And then I know a lot of guys who do great office work and they create a lot of shows, but when they get there, they don't have a show right. and they work everywhere once. Mm -hmm. That's it. You're done then. And that's, that's not good either. Uh, when I was doing it, I had three different shows because a lot of my corporate events would have me back two and three and four times. And I would always make sure I brought them a different show. Mm -hmm. I didn't use all my puppets in one show. I did one puppet per show. And I had three or four puppets. So I mm -hmm. could come back three times. They didn't see the same puppet. They didn't hear the same material. Mm -hmm. And that really helped me a lot. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Great advice so and great down stories. Brick wall. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a good book. It and was both a lot of, of fun. Those, both of those are available on Mayor. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Mayor Ventriloquist Studios. You can get uh, the Creating a Character as a course. And I'm not sure where you can, I don't know, are they still selling the book on that? Yeah. Should okay, be. great. I think it's a download book. I okay, it's great. A download yeah. Book. yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. it's a download book. So download uh, book also, and uh, the course, and then, yes. What? Oh, I was just going to say that uh, we had someone ask, uh, you can also get Breaking Down the Brick Walls of Showbiz on Amazon as well as Mayor Studios. Those are the two places you can okay. get that book. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, also, uh, I'd like to mention the IVS. Yes. If these people are not a member of the IVS, they need to be. Mm -hmm. um, because of all the recorded material that's on the IVS, it's a gold mine. It's, it's hours and hours and hours of material talking just like this with all kinds of people all kinds of topics and subjects. It is a complete college course in how to do this, business-wise and also entertainment-wise. And yeah. that $35 a year or $40 a year, whatever it is, is nothing compared to the information that you can get. And it's free. Yeah. It's when you're a member, you go down through the list and you pick what you want to listen to. And there's just hundreds of topics that, uh, that is talked about uh, with Mark, me, Tom, other people that are brought in, uh, other interviews that are done with all different kinds of every, people. Every few months, there's a, there's an update on how everyone's doing. Tom does this great yeah. Uh, newsletter. Yeah. 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 yeah the, I wish back when I started, there would have been a thing called the IVS with that much information on. Mm -hmm. My life would have been different. Totally yeah. different. Yeah. Back then, we didn't have anything. Uh, Clinton had a little newsletter you'd get, and, and you know that was it. I mean, mm -hmm. God bless him, you know, for doing it. Yeah. Um, but that was all. We we didn't have all the books. We didn't have all the videos. We didn't have all the instructional stuff. We have none of that. Jimmy Nelson had a record out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it was a great record, but yeah. it was a record in three books and and the uh, Clinton's paper and. That's it. You were done. And yeah. now, oh, you guys have the world at your feet and nobody seems to be taking advantage of it. And that just amazes me. Yeah. Just amazes me. It's great. I, I love to go back and listen to the podcasts and go through the newsletters because there's so many worldwide, so many different contributors and, yeah. you know, telling telling uh, their story and sharing what they've been up to <laughs> in the comments. Um Oh, Chuck Lyons said, plus there's a lot more coming on the IVS. Yes. And uh, yeah. Michael Paul said, tell Ken uh, Ziggy says hi. And then he also said, uh, Michael Paul also commented, um, I've had IBS. Is that the same thing? 
<laughs> close, close. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There, there's a name that goes way back with me too, Michael Paul. We've known each other yeah. forever, you know, and, and that's oh, the yeah. cool thing about getting old in this business. I can look back and man, there's just gobs of people that I've known for 35, 40, 45 years in this business. Wow. And uh, it's been great. Wow. Well, King Groves, thank you so much for being a part of Land and Live and for sharing your story. Well, thank you for doing it and keep up the great work, my friend. And definitely. Thank you guys for tuning in. And tomorrow night we have Tom Crowell. So hear the rest of King Groves' story with Tom Crowell tomorrow yeah. night, 7.30 Central Standard Time. It'll be phenomenal. Yes. And then Friday night Thank is Terry you. Fader. So we're just going to keep the great interviews rolling. Hope to see you guys there. Thank you. Keep it up. Keep it up. Love it. All right. Good night.